right now onward and hopefully upward with the upgraded Cadillac Cimarron. Now, whenever a new car is introduced, you hear a lot of expert road tests and first impressions. If those initial comments are less than favorable, they can haunt that model for its entire run, even if the manufacturer makes a big effort to upgrade the product. Now, here's a car that falls right into that category, the $12,000 plus Cadillac Cimarron. This was Detroit's first attempt to make a European-style sports luxury sedan. The first version arrived with a lot of promise and a lot of faults. Is the 83 Cadillac Cimarron better than the first car? Well, let's step into our time machine and see what we thought of the 82 car, and then we'll come back and see how the new one has changed. This is the Cimarron by Cadillac, not the Cadillac Cimarron. It's a subtle note for most, but a very important point at GM's prestige division. Not only is the Cimarron less Cadillac and more corporate J car, but it goes after a very non-Cadillac market. Caddy dealers have targeted the young, upper-middle-class, normally BMW and Audi buyer for this fuel-efficient subcompact. But to succeed, it'll have to handle and perform like no American luxury car before. Let's start with the traditional test of any sports luxury car. Can it hold its own on a smooth pavement with others of its kind? A lot of sporty cars give teeth-jarring rides, even on the best roads. The Cimarron's ride? It's silky and quiet. We got a sound level reading of 69 at 55 miles per hour. Cadillac didn't forget all of its heritage. Next, though, the real test. Can the Cimarron maneuver the switchbacks at a creditable speed? Entering at 35, your attention turns immediately to the quick power steering. It's rack and pinion and had some, if not enough, road feel. The car tracks well, goes where you want it to, and its moderate understeer nature, true of most front-wheel drive cars, is highly controllable. You'd really have to sling this baby caddy around before its specially balanced steel radials would ever become airborne. We exited at 40. It would have been faster except for the extremely anemic engine automatic transmission combination. Through the high-speed emergency lane changing course, I noticed some tail wiggle, but nothing alarming. The Cimarron darts true to the line, just wide enough for the pylons to keep from hitting that imaginary truck and short of going into the very real shoulder and guardrail. A more modest test of maneuverability is the curb-to-curb -curb turning diameter. The Cimarron's 36 feet is about average for this class of car. That's larger than the Audi 4000s, but the Cimarron will turn circles around the BMW 320i. So far, so good, but now the sour grapes. The Cimarron is very slow, even without our test car's automatic gearbox. A passing time of 7.5 seconds, going only from 40 to 55, puts the Cimarron in the same league with one diesel truck I know. And despite a lot of work at GM to provide pseudo-performance over short distances, they've still got a lot more to do. Over our 500-foot standing start course, the Cimarron got a slow time of 11 and a half seconds and only 45 miles per hour. To be honest, work is going on. GM has already improved performance in the Cimarron's 1.8-liter four-cylinder with a change in the power plant's computer but a 22-second, 65-mile-per-hour quarter-mile still seems dismal. The four-speed manual would lop about two and a half seconds off the time and add five miles to the per hour, but that's still an only fair showing. But something that Cadillac seems to have gotten right the first time is the Cimarron's braking system. From 30 miles per hour, very brief halts of 29 feet were recorded with nothing but security between your feet and the road. Pedal pressure continued low in panic halts from 55. Distances averaged a very brief 119 feet with only minor locking and no pull. Moderate fade was apparent, as was the strong smell of burning brake shoes. Yet the Cimarron never stopped out of the straight and narrow. Whatever slight rear end swing out did occur was never troublesome. A very good system. Next, let's take a quick look at the butt of all our Cimarron criticisms. The 88 horsepower developed by its 112 cubic inch power plant would seem adequate if it weren't for the four doors 2,640 pound weight. And one thing that troubles us, how is Cadillac going to shoehorn in an even larger engine and still leave room for its bevy of luxury options? 
Regardless, the Chevy made 2 liter and close ratio 5 speed manual will be offered soon. The interior of the Cimarron is gussied up J car. Leather, extra padding, with most logical creature comforts. The dash is complete with clear, round gauges and, believe it or not, brushed chrome rather than plastic wood. How European can you get? On paper, the Cimarron should get better gas mileage than any of its foreign competition. The EPA rates our automatic at 25 City, 41 Highway. Better than anything Audi, BMW, or even Volvo or Saab can produce. But our testing produced a very disappointing average of 20. So low that we're inclined to believe our car was in need of attention by a local Mr. Goodwrench. So much for the 82 Cimarron. This, on the other hand, is the 83 Cadillac Cimarron. Now, sheet metal changes are minor, but they do include a new, better-looking grill, a flat hood ornament here, and standard, well-integrated driving lamps down there. But fortunately, most of the changes are under the hood. Gone is the anemic 1.8 liter, and in its place, the 2 liter we mentioned, complete with 10% more torque, although the same 88 horsepower. And most importantly, throttle body fuel injection. And boy, does it make a difference. Since our 83 was also an automatic, we were not prepared for such a dramatic improvement in acceleration. But from 0 to 60, a time of 14.6 seconds was 1.2 seconds better than last year. Even bigger was the gain from 40 to 55, a drop of 1.7 seconds to a very reasonable 5.8. Gone too is the horrendous transmission lag and very rough gear changes. Over 500 feet, a better though still only fair time of 10.4 seconds and 50 miles per hour, but still much better than the 11.5 time and only 45 of the 82. Boggy starts our history with 14% more initial acceleration, and in the Maxima test, over a quarter mile, nearly a two second and five mile per hour improvement. And if you try the new five speed manual, times drop to under 19. Even handling, an area that was pretty good before, has been significantly bettered. New gas liquid McPherson struts and steering that feels quicker and more connected to the road. Cornering is flatter while ride is smoother, a terrifically difficult combination to obtain. Not even mileage was ignored. Even though EPA ratings are 8% lower for the city cycle and 10% less for the highway than in the 82, Actual mileage has soared. Where our before Cimarron, running right or not, got only 20, the revised car got 30. Better performance and economy, too. With no major change in price, the 83 Cadillac Cimarron is a great deal more car than last year. It finally hits the BMW Audi market right on the head. And by the way, this year GM's press releases refer to their little wonder as the Cadillac Cimarron rather than the Cimarron by Cadillac. It seems that the 83 car is so much better that the big C may finally call this little C all its own.